Most of the time when a team ends up with the number one overall pick, they're usually going to be set up with a player for the next 10 to 15 years that can maybe eventually lead them to a title. There's been so many elite number one overall picks in NBA history, but it's actually quite far from a given that they're going to be an eventual Hall of Famer. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? In this video, I'm going to be ranking all number one picks since 2010. So we're going to be ranking them from 14 to one. And obviously, since a lot of these guys are going to differentiate in how many years they've been in the league for, I'm going to be going this based off of their seal. So for number one overall picks, closer to 2010, like John Wall, Kyrie Irving, Anthony Davis, we pretty much know where they peaked at the NBA level. So for younger guys like Paolo Bancaro, Kate Cunningham, Victor Wembanyama, this is pretty much where I'm predicting where they could peak when they are in their prime. If you guys enjoy these style of videos, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up and let me know if you guys want to see me do this with number two overall picks as well since 2010. I think that'd be super fun. Let me know that in the comments or just drop a thumbs up on this video. Let's get into it. And we're going to start things off with the worst number one overall pick since 2010. You obviously could guess it. It's Anthony Bennett. I mean, that 2013 draft, it could have been Anybody who could have been selected number one at the time, there was rumors that it could be Victor Oladipo, Alex Len, Cody Zeller, Otto Porter. So the Cavs definitely shocked everybody when they took the man out of UNLV. Anthony Bennett were going to play just 151 games in the NBA and just 52 with the team that took him number one overall. In his rookie season, he played around 13 minutes a night, averaged 4.2 points, three rebounds and shot 35% from the field and 24% from three. And then he was included a year later in the Kevin Love for Andrew Wiggins trade with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He would go on to play in just 57 games for the Wolves, averaging 5.2 points and 3.8 rebounds. Spent the 2016 season with the Toronto Raptors where he appeared in 19 games, averaged four and a half minutes and averaged one and a half points a night. Finished up his career in Brooklyn in 2017 in 23 games and 11 minutes a night. He averaged five points and three and a half rebounds on one of the worst teams in the NBA. And Anthony Bennett will pretty much always be known as one of the biggest busts, and if not the biggest bust in NBA history. I was surprised this man came in at number 13, but if you just map out this list, it's kind of what it has to happen, and it's going to be Markel Fultz. So Markel Fultz was obviously the number one overall pick in the 2017 draft, and unlike Anthony Bennett, he was pretty much the consensus number one guy. He was so good with the Washington Huskies that college year prior. For the Huskies in his freshman season, he averaged 23 and a half points, six rebounds, and six assists a night, and shot 48% from the field and 41% from three. The Sixers even traded up from three to one with the Boston Celtics to go ahead and select the Washington point guard, but then shoulder injuries, mental and psychological obstacles, and just overall confidence in Fultz's game. He never really panned out at all in Philadelphia, just playing in 33 games in two seasons, averaging seven and a half points, three and a half assists, and shot 41% from the field and 26% from three. The jumper looked broken. It did not look pretty at all. And then he got traded to Orlando and in the 2020 season actually finished 13th in most improved player voting. He averaged career highs in points, assists, field goal percentage, and free throw percentage. Fultz over the next four years, was pretty solid in Orlando, averaging 13 points, five and a half assists, three and a half rebounds, and even shot 31% from three last year. But it looks like the jumper may be broken again in the 2024 season, unfortunately, where Fultz is non existent with the jumper whatsoever, is averaging seven and a half points a night, and it's probably not going to be on the Magic next year. But at least he got a nice contract extension from them where he made over $30 million over the last two seasons. So coming in at number 12, we have another number one overall pick from the Philadelphia 76ers, back to back years, but this is the one prior to Marco Fultz. Fultz, it's going to be Ben Simmons. So like Fultz, Ben Simmons was a consensus number one overall pick out of LSU. He was somebody that was going to be able to do it all. He could pass, defend, rebound, and was a 6'10", good ball handling point guard. Missed all of his rookie season with a foot injury. So he won rookie of the year in 2017, where he averaged 16 points, eight assists, and eight rebounds a night. And his first four years in the NBA, he averaged 16 points, eight rebounds, seven and a half assists, one and a half steals a night, shot 56% from the field, made three all-star teams, finished top five in Depoy two different times. He was on all defensive first team in 2020 and on all NBA third team in 2020 as well. He even finished 12th in MVP voting in 2021. He was somebody that could impact the game on both ends of the floor. Like I said, was an incredible passer as well. It was always a running joke with him that he had zero outside shot, had zero confidence with it whatsoever. And then the Atlanta Hawks kind of broke him in the 2021 playoffs, then held out in the 2022 season and had a severe back injury. He was traded for James Harwin. He goes to the Brooklyn Nets and his career has plummeted. He put 42 games last year, 15 games this year, and is out for the season. And that Ben Simmons we saw from 2018 to 2021 looks like it's going to be his peak. I mean, he's still only 27 years old, but I don't think we're ever going to see Simmons play even close to that level ever again, because unfortunately, he's just not going to stay healthy from what we've seen. So coming in at number 11, we have the number one overall pick from the 2018 draft, DeAndre Aiden. At their peak so far between Aiden and Simmons, Simmons was definitely the better player. I just think that Aiden is going to have more longevity in this league. He's still just 25 years old, and he's been a fine player. I don't think he's ever 
going to be an all NBA center, but he could be a consistent double double guy for at least the next decade. And I think that's going to trump what Ben Simmons did in just that four year period. DeAndre Aiden was drafted by the Suns, number one overall pick in 2018. Most people expected this to happen. It also helped that he played college in Arizona. Phoenix was looking for a center to pair up with their star shooting guard, Devin Booker. In hindsight, wasn't the right pick. It should have been Luka Doncic, but Aiden is far from a bust. He averaged 16 points and 10 rebounds in his rookie season, finished third in rookie of the year voting. He played five years in Phoenix, averaging 17 points, 10 and a half rebounds, and shot 59% from the field and was an important part to their 2021 championship run. Then he got traded for Yusuf Nurkic and some other pieces in the 2023 offseason. And this year for the Trailblazers, he's averaging 16 points and 11 rebounds. He's not going to be a franchise player and probably not going to be a Hall of Famer one day, but still, like I said, far from a bust of a number one overall pick. Coming in at number 10, we have Andrew Wiggins, who was drafted number one overall in 2014, technically by the Cleveland Cavaliers, but then was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves in the Kevin Love deal. Honestly, with all the expectations that Wiggins had, he was definitely a disappointment. Wiggins did win Rookie of the Year in the 2015 season, but other guys that were drafted after him, like Jabari Parker and Joel Embiid, had significant injuries. He would go on to have a fine sophomore year as well, where he averaged 21 points on 46% shooting as a 20-year-old. Had a great 2017 season, 23 three and a half points, four rebounds on 45% shooting, shooting 35% from three. And then owner Glenn Taylor basically promised Wiggins that rookie max extension on the agreement that Wiggins would try harder. And then Wiggins did not do that. In 2018, he dropped from 23 points a night to 17 points a night. 45% shooting into 43% shooting, 35 from three to 33% from three. And then the 2020 season was traded to the Golden State Warriors. Had a phenomenal first two full years with Golden State where he averaged 18 points, five rebounds, two and a half assists a night. He finished 19th in most improved player voting in 2021 and was even an all-star starter in 2022 and was one of the more important players on the Golden State Warriors championship run that season. But with some off the court or with some personal issues off the court and just diminished play this year, Wiggins looks like a shell of what he once was. 12 points per game, four and a half rebounds, 45% shooting as a 28 year old. It looks like Wiggins has definitely hit his peak so far. So this could have some debate at number nine. I have John Wall, who was the number one overall pick in 2010. Wall's career was definitely diminished by multiple injuries. He did not play at all in 2020 with a heel injury and Achilles injury. Also had an infection going on as well. So John Wall's peak was pretty much in Washington from 2010 as a rookie to 2019, where he averaged 19 points, nine assists, just under two steals a night, but did shoot 43% from the field and 32% from three. He was one of the more exciting point guards and honestly one of the better ones in the league, even though he really didn't have much of an outside shot. He finished runner up to Blake Griffin in the rookie of the year voting in his rookie season. He was an all-star in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. He was even an all defensive second team member in that 2015 season. Maybe I have a little bit of nostalgia with John Wall and that's why I have him above Andrew Wiggins. You can let me know if you disagree with that one in the comments. That's definitely one I had a little trouble ranking. So coming in at number eight, we have Zion Williamson from the 2019 draft. So many teams were trying to tank for Zion this season, and he ended up going to the Pelicans, a team that really didn't envision even getting him because they traded Anthony Davis that offseason as well. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is where I think that these players could peak in their prime. And I think Williamson's injuries makes me a little bit skeptical about putting him any higher in this ranking. But hey, if he's going to peak better than Andrew Wiggins and John Wall, that's still a really good player. That's a multiple-time All-Star and potentially All-NBA player. And Zion is still just 23 years old. So it's definitely hard to predict where his career is going to end up. So far though, 24 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, four assists a night on 59% shooting. The only problem is Zion is averaging around 35-ish games per season since he entered the league. So that's going to be a big question mark with him. Can he stay healthy? If so, he could definitely end up higher on this ranking. Coming in at number seven, we have Carl Anthony Towns, the number one overall pick in 2015. For Towns, we kind of know what he's going to be. He's one of the best offensive big men in the league, one of the best shooting big man of all time. It looks like he can't really be the number one on a really good team, but could be a really solid number two. He's had some question marks with his health in the past, but has been relatively healthy for most of his career. This is year number nine for Towns, where he's been averaging 23 points, 10 and a half rebounds, three assists a night, shooting 52% in the field, and 40% from three on four and a half attempts a night. Towns won rookie of the year in the 2016 season. He's made it to four all-star games, including this year in 2024 for the Minnesota Timberwolves, who are one of the best teams in the NBA. He's been on all NBA third team two different times. And like I said, I don't think that Towns can be a number one on a championship level team, can be a perfect number two. And that's what's gonna limit him from being higher on this ranking because a couple players ahead of him that were drafted recently, I think maybe have a higher potential and a higher ceiling than Cat currently has. So coming in at number six, we have Cade Cunningham, the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft. Cade is just 22 years old. So yeah, we have a lot of Cade Cunningham left to watch and evaluate. And he's been on some horrible Pistons teams so far, but I still think that Cade has a super high
high potential and could eventually be a borderline top 10 player in the league one day. I still have all my Cade stock. I loved him coming out of Oklahoma State and I haven't sold any of it. It took a little bit of Cade to get acclimated to the NBA, but ended up finishing third in a really good rookie class in the 2022 season, averaging 17 and a half points, five and a half assists and five and a half rebounds. He only played in 12 games in year two and this year has been very good for a very bad Pistons team. 22 points, seven and a half assists, four and a half rebounds. And I think with Cade's game, we all thought how much will that outside jumper improved? Well, he's shooting 35% from three this year on five and a half attempts a night. He's shooting 87% from the line. So I think he's going to be a consistent three-point shooter throughout his career. I think he's a plus defender as well. And I'm going to be excited to see Cade actually on winning teams. Hopefully they come sooner rather than later because then this may look like a really bad take for me. But we're still like five-ish years out away from watching Cade's prime. And I do think that his ceiling is going to be higher than what we've seen from Cat's ceiling so far. All right, let's kick off the top five where I have the number one overall pick from the 2022 draft, Paolo Bancaro. You could have not asked for a better start to Bancaro's career with the Orlando Magic. He won the Rookie of the Year award in the 2023 season, averaging 20 points, seven rebounds, and three and a half assists a night, shooting 43% from the field. This year, he's improved almost every aspect of his game. He was an all-star as a 21-year-old, averaging 22 and a half points, five and a half assists, seven rebounds a night, shooting 47% from the field, 37% from three, and is the best player on an Orlando Magic team that may even be a non-play in tournament playoff team. He's also improved as a defender as well. He was on the FIBA World Cup roster last year, and I do think that Paolo's ceiling could be a definitive top 10 player in the league and could peak as high as in the top five one day if he continues this progression throughout his career because he's a top, what, 30, 35-ish player already and he's only 21 years old. But yeah, let me know how you would rank Paolo, Cade, and Cat. I think that was a tough trio to rank as well. All right, coming in at number four, we got Kyrie Irving, who was the number one overall pick in the 2011 draft. And you may be like, Matt, well, Kyrie was never really a top five player at any point in his career, but I think what we've seen from Kyrie in the playoffs has to earn him a spot here at number four, especially for what he did with the Cavs in 2016. Kyrie was drafted to the Cavs in 2011 as a 19-year-old. He won the 2012 Rookie of the Year award. Then he went on to make three straight All-Star games. In his career, he's an eight-time All-Star. He's made two All-NBA third teams, one All-NBA second team. Has had an insane seven-year peak from 2017 to 2024, averaging 25 and a half points, six assists, four and a half points on 49% field goal shooting, 40% from three and 90% from the line. But like I said, it's really his playoff resume in 13 career finals games. He's averaged 28 points, four rebounds and four assists shooting 47% from the field, 40% from three and 93% from the line. Oh yeah, he's also hit one of the greatest shots in NBA history in game seven of the 2016 finals. And I don't know if we're ever gonna see that from Paolo or Cade in their playoff careers. So coming in at number three, we have the number one overall pick from the 2012 draft. Anthony Davis. This is year number 12 for the Brow. And in his career, he's averaged 24 points, 10 and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, a steal and a half a night, two and a half blocks a night, and a shot 52% from the field. AD has an incredible resume. He's a nine-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA member, four-time All-Defensive Team member, 2017 All-Star Game MVP. He's on the NBA 75th anniversary team. And oh yeah, he won a title with the Lakers in 2020. I think he's also been one of the more underrated defenders as we look across career defenders. I feel like he's not really mentioned as the elite guys in the 21st century on that side of the floor. And AD has peaked as a top five player in the league at one point as well. But I just think the two guys ahead of AD do have higher ceilings. And AD never won a title with the Pelicans as a number one option. I do think it's possible with the guys ahead of him. So coming in at number two, we have Anthony Edwards. Yes, the number one overall pick from the 2020 draft. I am super high on the Ant-Man. I think he could be the face of the NBA one day. Anthony Edwards is just 22 years old. Just 22. He finished runner-up in the rookie of the year voting in the 2021 season of LaMelo Ball. He improved in every aspect of his game from year one to year two. He was an all-star last year in year three and this year in year four. And over his last 146 games in those two seasons, he's averaging 25 and a half points, four and a half assists, five and a half rebounds, a steal and a half, shooting 46% from the field, 37% from three, and 80% from the line. He was the breakout star on the FIBA World Cup team last summer. He also broke out in the playoffs against the Denver Nuggets in 2023. I feel like he's a human highlight reel, and we see a different star-studded play from him every single night. And I'm really excited to see how he's going to continue his playoff momentum from last year into the 2024 playoffs and onwards. I do think the Ant-Man could be a top five player in the NBA for multiple years, could maybe even peak as the best player in the league. He has that potential. And even if he has just a 
that slight potential. We never saw that from guys like AD, Kyrie, Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think Paolo or Cade or even Zion will ever be the best player in the league. But like I said, I do think that Anthony Edwards does have that potential and just having that potential alone is gonna earn him that number two spot. All right, you may think I'm crazy. You may think I'm crazy, but at number one, I have Victor Wembanyama, the number one overall pick from this most recent draft of 2023. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to take a lot of potential into account here. And the fact that Wemby has number one player in the league for maybe 10 years type of potential, it's going to earn him this number one spot. You could say in his rookie season, just in his rookie season alone, half as a 19-year-old, half as a 20-year-old, he's already a top 10 guy in the league. 21 points per game. Three and a half blocks, leading the NBA as a rookie, 10 and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, one and a half steals, shooting 46% from the field, 32% from three on five and a half attempts a night, and 80% from the line. He's going to finish probably runner-up in defensive player of the year voting in his rookie year. He could have five deep poise by the time we're in the middle of his prime. I do think that Webby could be the number one player in the league like Anthony Edwards. He has that potential. And I do think also like Anthony Edwards, he could be the best player on a championship team. Something we never saw from Kyrie. We never saw from Anthony Davis. And that's just going to hold them back from being number one and number two in this ranking. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. That was a really fun exercise to do and it was really tough. So let me know what you agree with or disagree with in the comments below. Also, let me know if you guys want to see me do this with maybe number two overall picks and we can do this for number three, number four, and number five overall picks as well. That'd be super fun. And if you guys did enjoy, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.